Greetings, unsettled souls! No! Welcome to The Correct Views. It's Sam, I need to you doing political commentary for the media speaks. I'm also with the conservative Daily Post and the last news, of course, the band Passing Time. Um, for those of you that already know about the characters that we make on Fourth of um, um, April Fool's Day and Halloween, skip ahead two minutes, and I'll get right into the show. For everybody else, I have been gone for quite a moment, and I'm going to be gone for a while longer because I don't own any decent gear. This camera that you're seeing is all that I own, and I don't trust Google Hangouts to keep working because it doesn't. Um, I'll probably keep the dunce cap in the Fukushima as I think about it, but the regular show I probably won't be doing until I get better gear. You could donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. I give through uh, PayPal that way as well. Um, for the show, um, here's what we're doing. We've got our characters. For those of you that don't know, the characters are all fake. News is all real. And it's something funny. All the stories are real. And they are covered as if the characters that you are about to see were real. So what I would like everyone to do is to get ready for the easily the uh, most hilarious show you'll ever see. And uh, we do these quite often on uh, holidays. And by holidays, I mean all the other days that everyone forgets. Strange days. Everyone knows Fridays the 13th is a great holiday. We're going to bring you Buddy Puff. He is the intern at the Correct Views. His whole job is to get his own show someday. But for some reason, just don't think that's going to happen. Friends, we're going to take suspension of disbelief, and then we go to the April Fool's show. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Welcome to like the Correct Views, and this is for you. Because this is legal in a lot of states now. <laughs> That's the one I mean. Uh, <coughs> I tell you, one of the people that say that they don't use drugs at all is like President Donald Trump, but he doesn't ever drink, doesn't smoke weed, uh, doesn't, <laughs> not like this. I think maybe he's like got some secondhand smoke from like Pence was like in the bathroom lighting up there. Because it says here at the news wrap from Daily Mirror, aren't you forgetting something, Donald? Uh, awkward moment. Trump walks out of executive order ceremony without signing the executive order. <laughs> I was like, <coughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Vice President Mike Pence appeared to try to get the president back, but he left the room. Donald Trump once again, he raised eyebrows with his bizarre behavior. It wasn't bizarre behavior, man. Things like that happen to me like all the time. Like you can see, I can't screen share, but you can see right there, Donald Trump's like, yeah, man, I'm high. I just forgot to like, this is it. The president triumphantly announced new measures to push his crusade on far trade and bring manufacturing back to the U.S. You know, where they can make things like memory pills. And they walked out of the old office without ever deciding the order's hand. An awkward moment was captured on camera. I kind of like mine is now. But Mike Tense appeared to go after Trump and tell him he'd forgotten. The, like, yo, dude, that's like a crucial step. Uh, another one, the star man. Now, you would talk about somebody that we probably needed to get stoned. This kid won, like, the big Monopoly prize. Like, I mean, like, the real big one that you want to get, man. Couldn't get his prize. And, like, told him to go, go to fall. I'm not allowed to say that ever. They told him to leave. Daily Star, lad baffled after McDonald's refuses to give him Monopoly prize. Uh -huh. Thanks for playing, Schmuck. <laughs> there he is. He's like, look at me, man. I won, but I got nothing to show for it. AJ reveals got a voucher and a dessert from the Big Mac. in Thursday at McDonald's at Blackpool, Rochester. That's like, you know, not in Ohio. 
So he returned to the counter to collect his prize, but was left devastated when the staff said he was too young to win. He's also too stupid to have his mom turn it in, you know. It's what drugs do to the youth, man. Gambling laws mean only customers age 16 or over can play McDonald's. You know, because we all know that a 16-year-old is an adult. Oh, the kids don't buy winning tokens for their meals. AJ, who suffers from Asperger's syndrome, which is even more of a downer, man, anxiety and said, I felt disappointed and I'm not sure I would go back. If he goes back, man, I think he's got more than Asperger's syndrome. He needs to go back with a lawyer. His mom, you know, who wasn't smart enough to turn it in for him, 52-year-old Reeves said, I completely understand that McDonald's are only 16 years old in order to play. You know, because once you hit 16, you're smart enough to have your mom do it. But if that is the case, then they should not be selling them to under 16s. But if they are, they're like tricking kids. <laughs> well, they like tricked him, didn't they? They say they don't advertise on Happy Meal. But how many 14 and 15 year olds are eating the Happy Meal? There's Kim Jong Un, man. You guarantee he ate some Happy Meal, man. If it happened to him, he'd have set a rocket after him. Hey, buddy, I think you're getting a little uh, sidetracked there. Oh, yeah, about North Korea. I, about McDonald's, man. Um, no, yeah, man. The McDonald's, it was not in North Korea. See how I tied that together, man? My son was very upset by the incident. Due to his problems, like he wouldn't have been mad anyway. I got one more story, and I'm already doing a terrible job. So, this one is all about lung cancer. And I was really happy to find that there are a bunch of stuff. Oh, my hair's not right. There you go. You want it in my, out of my face, you may see me. The, the thing is, the, the, this here, this tobacco could be bad for you. You know, it's allegedly, but you, but you know, but the weed itself does not cause cancer. Unfortunately, it looks like incense do. Check this out, man. This happened at a funeral. You know, one of those funerals where people are dead. Family offended after <coughs> after stranger cops through eulogy. Family offended after stranger addresses mourners. At Quincy Funeral. Listen to what he said, man. I did by this, but I see that the smoke in the church, in the Asian churches, is so prevalent that I gag when I go inside. What I've told you about this <coughs> church is not taken. Um, Offense. I mean, now, see, here's one of those things where you gotta wonder, like, what's he talking about? I, mean, like, I was in New York City once, that's in New York State, and there was like this, this Buddhist temple, and I went in, man, and the. Man, that's starting to already hurt my lungs, Christelle. It's not funny. She's in here like poisonous incense, man. So I went into this Buddhist temple, and like, I didn't see Buddha or nothing, because he's like already dead. To make another few more. I don't know if they said this it is or not, but you can smell the incense. Incense smoke, man, going everywhere. It made you kind of hack and cough. It's only like I can hear it now. A Quincy family was stunned when a stranger suddenly got up at their mother's funeral and started making comments which they feel were racially insensitive. I don't know if it's racially insensitive. To try to warn somebody that they're killing themselves, but I guess it is in some cultures. On March 18th, that's like just a little bit ago, Adrian Wong delivered the eulogy for his mother who passed away from lung cancer. And all jokes aside, man, that ain't funny. Stay away from the cigarettes, man. She was a non smoker, though, not exposed to secondhand smoke, never worked around chemicals. She was simply unlucky. You know, because unlucky is what they use for words like the government kills you with bomb testing or we put poisons in your food. <laughs> no, just unlucky. Anyway, this guy got up, man. His name was Dan Daniel Small, and he didn't, didn't even know who he was. And he started talking about how the smell inside makes him gag 
and he thinks that that might have been what caused her lung cancer, man. So I don't know if it's true or not, but I know this. There's a lot of Asian people that are pissed off about that. And that's your report, man. Because if I go on any longer, nobody will watch. But coming up next, man, is like the guy that I, I drink beer with. He's the only one who can going to afford to buy it. Billy Bob Joe, Jimmy John, he lives in like the trailer. So I'm going to go ahead and put him on, and you'll see me again the next time I'm on here to be seen. Bye. Wow, back here at reality. That was horrendous. He gets worse and worse and worse. I, I, friends, I'm sorry. Well, we got some show left. Uh, Billy Bob Joe Jimmy John is coming up next. Now, this is a redneck. He, we, we, Christelle and I were trying to figure out how in the hell he even got on the show. He roamed in one day with Buddy Puff because Buddy doesn't have a car. He got a car, man. He just doesn't have an engine. All right. He doesn't have a working car. And, um, of course, our resident redneck uh, gave him a ride in. And uh, he hopped on camera. I think that was Christelle's idea. And did a remarkably good job. So I don't see any reason not to at least give him a try here again on April Fool's Day. Friends, here we go. Back into the insanity. It is Billy Bob Joe Jimmy John on the April Fool Show here at the Correct Views. I'm glad everybody. I'm so glad everybody's back on again because we're gonna go ahead and cover some news. Fox Five Atlanta. See, I get right to it. I don't even understand that talk goes beforehand. That would be like, yeah, we're on and on and on. Don't ever done be getting to the point. That ain't me. You ain't gonna find me doing nothing like that. Fox Five Atlanta. That's the one in Atlanta, Georgia. Tables as world's oldest DJ. Oh, I should put it up all the way. Look at that. 82-year-old woman still turning tables as the world's oldest DJ. Now, I'm going to let you guys listen. Well, a grandma in Japan proves that age is nothing but a number for some. <laughs> That don't sound like Waylon Jennings, but I guess they like it. Rainy on the ones and twos there. I like that. Here's a look at the world's oldest DJ turning the tables, laying down tracks at a popular nightclub in Tokyo. The 82-year-old has cooked with her family business for several years, but then a few years back, the Tokyo woman decided to kick off a new career in spinning music, and she has no plans in stopping anytime soon. That just means that age ain't nothing but a number. But sometimes it can be like a really high number. The good thing is it used to be back in the day, you'd have like these boxes of records. And you try to carry them all in. If she had to carry all them in, she probably wouldn't be able to do it. No. But now they put them on those MP3 sticks and they stick them right in the computer. If you do it right, you can go ahead and download mixes and just make it look like you're doing something, too. That happened. You see all know who David Greta is. Uh, Tokyo, Japan. A grandmother in Japan has proven that age is nothing but a number. It says that she'd be spinning music for many, uh, many years. And that's something I think that's, I do wish she'd play something a little, had to have a little more country to it. But that's okay, because you get too much country, you end up with something like this. Racist proposal at Central Social Media Reform. You may be picking cotton. Yeah. Yeah. You may be picking cotton, but you're pick we're picking you to go with us to prom. Hmm. Now see, this is one of those things that weren't racist, but went ahead and it looked like it was racist. Now one of the ways you could tell it wasn't really racist is a black person in the picture holding up the sign about picking cotton. Problem is they made a joke about a lesson that they had in school. The four of them. There's only three in the picture. I'll explain it in a minute. Four of them. And then the people that been in the picture, I'd overheard in a separate conversation, of course, the, the, the child, or the, the, I guess you're if you're 16, you're an adult now. And that is what might have taught us. Uh, that, that one of the students didn't have a date to the prom. So they said they were going to go ahead and take this student to the prom. Now, he's probably, he or she, probably a black person who's just like one of the other people in the, in the, in the, in the picture are. They went ahead and made the joke about an in a, a joke between two people, like an inside joke, I guess what to call it. And they made it in reference about the prom date and on social media. And none of that confusing context that I gave you was giving. Nope. 
you know, that's kind of a complicated story. News don't like complicated stories. They just went ahead and put that up there and called these people dumb racist. And I don't think they're racist, although I do think they're pretty damn stupid. Update on Friday, the day of this post was originally published, WPLG Local 10 News in Florida published an update on the situation. <clears throat> Two South Florida high school students have been suspended after a distasteful sign holding up the prom proposal picture was placed on the internet. Now, I do want to know why only two of them got suspended since all three of them is the one holding it up. <clears throat> the father of one of the students is holding up the sign and said it was an unfortunate joke that was never meant to be on social media, though their parents, all girls, have apologized. Now, I understand the joke because people often call Sam I.B. a dumb dago all the time, and that's kind of funny considering he's more Sicilian than he is Italian. But the thing is, they don't really have a whole lot of Sicilian jokes. So most people in Sicilia are too busy eating meatballs to make any. So they go with the one that's already there. And now I'm getting dirty look already. Anyway, according, they really want to apologize for their extremely poor choice of words in the situation, said the father of one student. They would like to take it back. They would like to find a different way to express the invitation to the prom. That might be best idea. Proposal season is in full swing, and while we love seeing extravagant, dramatic, adorable ways, kids are asking each other out the prom these days. Some proposals are simply in poor taste. Well, I have to say this. I understand the joke. I really do. Um, I know a lot of people got really upset about it when I decided to post it on Twitter because 2017 and stuff like that is completely wrong. Well, the fact is, it simply isn't funny, somebody wrote. Well, it was probably funny to them because it wasn't a racist joke. Making, making fun of racists, but it didn't come out that way. And since the rednecks telling you the story, I should probably just move on. That Associ would probably be this. Associated Press. The latest spacewalking astronaut salvaged job back in the sand. Now, the most important thing to remember is that when you're in space, it costs a lot of money to go ahead and be putting you into space. So try to do yourself a favor and don't be dropping stuff all over while you're up there. Because if you go ahead and drop stuff in space, it's really hard to get it back. Sometimes the Earth might get it back, but you ain't going to get it. It's going to be sucking around the planet and get making into space junk. And you can't make any cool stuff in the yard out of space junk because it's in space. Almost like I was there. Well, it, it, the post in here is in order, so I'm going to go to the one that's most important. Uh, the person who had the most spacewalks had to go ahead and fix this up. Spacewalking astronauts have lost an important piece of shielding needed for the International Space Station. You know, it don't matter if you burn up or if the radiation cushion you to a crisp. Who needs it? You know, a cloth bundle floated away Thursday midway through a spacewalk by Peggy Winston and Shane Kimbrell. Whitson immediately reported the mishap to Mission Control, which is probably a good idea, and it tracked as the item drifted away. NASA said the shield will be monitored to make sure it doesn't come back and hit the station. Not because it comes back at like you whipping around the world faster than uh, faster than those people regretted that post they had on the internet last story. And immediately reported that it was a problem. The shielding protects against macromedia debris. In other words, little tiny things. I'll give it back, buddy. Little tiny things go zipping around. And they hit something with enough force, it can blow it apart. Even if it's just a little bit of piece went way up there. NASA said the shield will be monitored, and it was disappearing. Turn of events, a record setting spacewalk for Winston, the world's oldest and most experienced spacewalker. So get this. At 740, she talked about how she was the most experienced person to ever go into outer space. That she had done it more times than anybody else in the whole world. And celebrate it. Not done, but three hours later, she doesn't drop one of the most important things you need in all the space with all of her vast experience. That proves that you really don't need experience to do a lot of things, which is how I ended up on this show, as a matter of fact. NASA says there's no chance of International Space Station will be struck by a piece of thermal shielding. So that's awful good. That way they ain't going to be, you know, dealing with a great big hole because holes are harder to deal with when you're on a spaceship, of course. Um, 2.30 p.m., two astronauts were back inside following a spacewalk that took an unintended turn when equipment got away. And we just covered that. Of course, they posted it all up in order. And that's all of it for me. I'll be back on next time, buddy. He doesn't ever ride in here because I know he ain't ever going to get an engine for that Hugo. So what I'm going to do is sign off here and put the last... Right, we've got the Invisible Man coming up. I did forget about him. And then Ard Martis. So you guys are going to see the Invisible Man here in just a minute. 
Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Billy Bob Joe, Jimmy John. Well, his was his was decent. That that wasn't particularly bad. He did better than Buddy did. Okay. All right, friends. So that means we're gonna go ahead and bring to us here the Invisible Man, and uh, he's all the way in from England. And then we're gonna bring you Arg Mortis. Now, Arg is uh, well, we'll get to Arg in a minute. Anyway, Invisible Man, how are you? Oh, it's most happy to be back into the states again. Oh, did you, where were you at? Where was I at? But I mean, I didn't assume you only stayed in England. Oh, like only England? I didn't say I was only in England. I said that I wasn't in the States. Ah, I see. I was eating cookies with Kim Jong-un. Oh, I thought he ate cheese. He ain't going to give away any of his cheese. All right, friends, it is my job to hop in here and do the most important things. Hello, I am the invisible man sitting here in this chair, as you can see, and reminding you that you can donate to The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. That is The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. When you make sure that we have money, then you will make sure that you can have a show. Like, imagine how much better this show would be if we could actually edit it and not have to do it in just one take. That would probably be extremely useful. Anyway, I'm going to jump off of you now and bring you, well, I guess he's a man. He's a top hat wearing freak is what he is. He's the one who answers the phone here at The Correct Views. And here's the one and only Mr. Arg Maltese. Oh, yes, it is always good when Arg Maltese is in the building. Where is he? I'm coming! Ah, uh, friendly as always. Uh, hello, Arg Mortis here. I'm the person who answers the phone when you call. I'm the public relations voice, the voice of friendliness that greets you when you call the phone. Call, call now. Let me get to the story there. Idiot dropped the cap for the time. I'm going to spill it all over the table. This is from the mirror.co.uk. It contains graphic content which viewers may find disturbing. I found it disturbing because they killed a snake. The snake ate a human being and they cut the snake open. Body of Indonesian men swallowed whole by monster seven meter long python and cut from his stomach. So let me show you the video. That maybe look at them kill this poor snake. That's the disturbing part here. They carve, they cut away the skin. There it is, the skin of the snake. Cutting it away to reveal the body parts. The man inside went for a walk, and instead he found a great big snake. Horrified villagers searching for their missing pal were shocked when they found him in the stomach of a seven-meter python. He had swallowed him whole. Friends of Akbar, not Allah Akbar, otherwise he'd have been beheaded. Akbar and Salubrio were wearing boots, short t-shirt when he was cut from the belly of the beast. With sharp, unforgiving eyes, the innocent snake was sliced open with an 18-inch hunting knife. Villagers hunting for a silverio found in the back garden. A 25-year-old vanished after he set off for harvesting, harvesting palm oil in a remote village of the island of West Samwesi, Indonesia, which I guess doesn't get capitalized if you work for the mirror. Uh, oh, look at him. That's all that's left. Women stumbled across strange, oh, that's a different video, where right? yeah, they posted. When he didn't return home, concerned, their friends and relatives began looking for him the next evening. They found the stodged python sprawled out on Akbar's back garden on Monday night at 10 p.m. and feared that he had been suffocated and swallowed. And as you saw from the evidence, that is exactly what happened. 
Incredible footage shows the corpse being slowly removed from this killer reptile. With leathery skin peeled away, he was found in the location of the garden. The innocent snake, he was cut and sliced. They cut him open and he was captured. They heard cries from the palm grove the night before that maybe the time to go out there with your knife was when you were hearing the cries for help. Maybe, just maybe, it's a little bit late to go looking for Akbar the next day after the cries for help have been silenced by an unforgiving snake. Yes, stupid son of a... You don't have to say that either. Uh, zero hedge, and then this is the kind of math there you only find in California with Jerry Brown. Germany's dumbest bank makes $5.4 billion transfer error. April Fool's Day. Always got the idiots on April Fool's Day. Back in the summer of 2015, Deutsche Bank mistakenly paid six billion. Is it five point four? Or is it six? We're not talking about couch change. Six point zero billion to a hedge fund by mistake in a fat finger trade on its foreign exchange desk. The embarrassed bank recovered the money from the U.S. hedge fund, who shouldn't have given it back the next day, and quickly accused the junior member of the bank's forex sales team. Of being responsible for the transfer in June. This is while his boss was on holiday. He's been sitting in there all that time. Imagine the amount of knives they could have bought for six billion dollars. As Bloomberg reports, state-owned KFJ, not to be confused with the chicken place, joined and gained notoriety for erroneously transferring hundreds of millions of euros to Lehman Brothers on the day the U.S. firm filed for bankruptcy. And it appears to have done it again in February. Mistakenly transferred five billion euros. Now it lost a billion to four banks because of a technical glitch, like not being able to type, perhaps. Uh, I know that sounds well, but KFC, KFJ has detected KFW uh, the system's incorrect behavior. We're nearly in the process of immediately mitigated the unwanted action and started the unnecessary processes for analyzing the causes. The causes is you don't know how to use a mouse. You don't know how to use a clicker. And you don't have any respect for other people's money. But it's okay because it's not real money anyway. It's just fiat money that's printed on a printing press. The only reason America isn't bankrupt is because we're still the word currency. Our money has lost 99% of its value since it was taken off the gold standard. So maybe it was a difference of $1 billion. It really doesn't matter much when none of the money is real. The mistake, I might have gotten off track. The mistake was rapidly identified from June and eliminated, and the amounts overpaid was successfully demanded back. I bet you they won. How, how do you wake up in the day and not find out that you got it? Five point something billion dollars that keeps adding up to six dollars that you didn't have before, and out of nowhere, you didn't know about it. You have to wait until somebody points it out. That brings us to the Dundee. It's hard to believe on April Fool's Day that it could get any dumber. Oh, but it does. Texas man died with indecent exposure after his neighbor claims he was having sex with a fence. <laughs> Boston police arrested a 32-year-old man last week after a neighbor complained to officers that he was having sex with a fence. <laughs> El Dorado is still facing a misdemeanor charge of indecent exposure in Travis County. Court records show. I bet the fence was a female fence. I know he doesn't look like he's some kind of freak. The female neighbor told police that he was looking out in the duplex window. When on Wednesday she saw Estella urinating on the fence that separates the property. Well, unless she's into some sex a little bit sicker than I am. Urination doesn't really usually revolve around sexual intercourse. The man undressed, oh, put his mouth on the chain, licked fence, stuck up his tongue, 
and began with the fans had sex with the fans. Uh, the woman, or the police, the woman took photos and video. I bet she did <laughs> videos on her cell phone that she watched uh, allegedly, repeatedly uh, before calling the police. Uh, according to the statement, uh, police and Estrella appeared to be intoxicated. I imagine if you drank enough, the fence would look good. I've drank enough that I've woke up beside people in the morning and I wish I had chosen the fence. In 2010, Estrella was convicted in the Houston area for drunk and driving. Well, at least he wasn't driving a car. He was driving something else into the holes of an unyielding fence. Friends, you're listening to the correct news. I am Orga Mortis, and I am leaving. Call, and it will be my friendly voice that you hear. <coughs> wow. Well, friends, there it is. That is your April Fool's show. Did it all in one take. Didn't mess up the languages this time. Again, I'm probably going to go ahead and do the Dance and the Fukushima. I'll update everybody on the one that didn't work. I've been gone because I don't have a camera. And my camera is crap. And I don't trust this uh, hangout because it keeps leaving me down. So do me a favor. I see I've got listeners. Leave comments before you leave. I know the show's done. Don't leave yet. Leave comments. Let me know how you like it. Most importantly, let me know which one your favorite character was. And if you'd like to see another character, I can try to create him, but uh, I need time on the accents. Thank you, everyone. That's Christelle doing all the sound effects this evening and helping set up with the props. Good night, friends. God bless. <laughs>